Thank you, Mark. As mentioned, my name is Sean Martinez, and I'm the Technical Account Manager here at SolarWinds. And as he mentioned, today we'll be covering uh, Office 365, specifically around monitoring and securing the tool uh, and how we can give you some better visibility. Like I mentioned, I'm the Technical Account Manager here, so if you have any questions, uh, not only just about today's demo, but really about anything with the SolarWinds portfolio as a whole, just be aware I have uh, our contact information here on our slides. Now to go through the agenda real quick, uh, we always like to go through real quick SolarWinds overview about who we are, what we do, and then we'll go into the products of, of the nature of today's call. So monitoring Office 365, focusing on performance, talking about security, as well as we will make sure to have a demonstration. Uh, we always make sure to have a, additional resources, and then we'll also have a Q&A uh, available as well in case you have any questions. So SolarWinds at a glance. SolarWinds was st started in 1999, originally for monitoring network tools, mostly around the Y2K time. So monitoring to make sure, you know, are we up, are we having functions, and then really focusing on the biggest issues of the day of, you know, uh, ensuring that we were uh, com compatible and working with uh, the systems of the future. So starting with those three tools, we've slowly grown into different areas of not only just network, network monitoring management, but also systems management, IT management products, and then growing into our portfolio into different areas of virtualization, storage, cloud, so that we can definitely handle all levels of IT. So, uh, you know, in, in whatever mission or mission critical tasks you are handling. We have a very large number of subset of customers, uh, over 150,000 uh, registered users on our form site. And I always say that's a great place for uh, a lot of our customers to not only just interact with the employees of SolarWinds, but also interact with other, other uh areas of IT in other realms, since we have, you know, maybe lessons learned, things we, we can ha have covered uh, in here. And really with the success of our forum and our pro products working so well, that's the reason why we are really well known, especially because of the fact that we have over 320,000 customers, but almost every company in the Fortune 500 does utilize us uh, to be able to, you know, monitor, manage uh, really just different types or different areas of their, their IT infrastructure. Uh, and then we also have and support really every branch of the, the DOD and uh, civilian and intelligence agencies uh, that we do have uh, some sort of installments or, or deployment available uh, for various tasks out today. So what is the, the SolarWinds IT operations management? The idea here is that when we talk about IT operations management, it, it's usually like I mentioned, we're talking about different facets of IT and just trying to simplify, visualize, aggregate, but also be able to work with all different levels of, of IT users, directors, CIO, CTOs, and be able to really determine, you know, or aggregate what's going on with the infrastructure and report, report, notify, or start orchestrating and making some sort of changes. So like I mentioned, we started with a network here at the bottom, but really we're focusing on just network or infrastructure. And then we went on to other areas of database performance application performance, and then also encapsulating that with the security realm. So that way, if there is something or some area that we are working on, whether it's on-premise, in your private cloud, or some sort of private cloud or public cloud, like we're talking today with like Azure or AWS or some other, we have that the supportability. There's also the ability for us to have a, a service management tier so that not only are we able to show you, visualize, and recommend and, and notify you, but also having some sort of workflow process, you know, some sort of operating procedure, so that way, whenever we do identify these issues, we are then able to, you know, go the step further of troubleshoot, triage, and help to resolve uh, the issues that we've we've identified. Now, like I mentioned here today, we're focusing on Office 365. So, really, one of the first things that we always like to talk about is the availability or the uptime of these tools, uh, especially because, you know, like I mentioned, we are talking about a private or a public cloud. So, you know, obviously this is, these are servers owned by Microsoft, being leveraged by Microsoft for these tools, being able to make sure, you know, first off, are they up and online and available? Because especially if you've seen uh, or have experienced some of the recent outages where Microsoft accidentally released a, a patch without proper testing and it took down the network in the last 30, 45 days, that's kind of one of the biggest issues a lot of customers are trying to see of, is it us or is it possibly the, the vendor of this tool or the vendor of the, of the tool that we're utilizing here that's having some sort of issue or outage. Because especially, I always say is, 
really with all levels of IT, you know, for our first issues or the first area customers will contact is our help desk. So by being able to visualize, monitor, and report the status and availability of the, the portal overall is a great way so that we can go ahead and show, visualize, and like I said, show that to all levels of your, your uh, internal staff. Also make that available to public staff too uh, with our role-based access. And then with our system, like I mentioned, because we're monitoring reporting, the other area is the continuous monitor aspect. So as we are, are monitoring this persistently and consistently, are we doing good, better, or worse than we were one month, one day, or even a year uh, ago as we are doing this, this continuous monitoring over time? And then we also have, like I mentioned, the service line agreement, so we can actually define a warning or critical threshold. So that way, if it's not just a complete outage, but maybe we have a contract, or we know we need to have a certain level of service for user, users before they start calling in saying, hey, I'm having ac accessibility issues, maybe sending an email through my phone, or I've tried to bring up the Outlook, and, and because of that, you know, it, it hung at the loading screen, but I'm not able to see anything in the system. So by being able to see and make sure if there's an outage or issue with the availability, we can go ahead and, and get that as a first quick glance or, or reportable view. The next area is monitoring or leveraging, you know, not only just the availability of the tool overall, but really the tool of the availability of the accounts or uh, the accessibility of, of the different systems. Because especially when we talk about, uh, you know, email, it's very easy where uh, you know you we run into issues of we have users that might be in the infrastructure or been utilizing our, our mail infrastructure for years if not decades so we have a lot of issues sometimes we'll run into uh, mailboxes that have grown extra exponentially large maybe those those people have recently retired or, or moved away or, or has some sort of change so those mailboxes have been inactive but they're still consuming a lot of storage space like I mentioned, especially, especially with the mobile devices, making sure that, you know, are they able to access their storage, they're able to access their mail, uh, so that, and also not only just their mail, but also maybe mail groups, distribution lists, so that way if there is some sort of cross uh, crosstalk between different people or different groups, they still have that, that accessibility. We can see, is there any issues uh, with the system, system performance? And once again, with this continuous monitoring, we'll be automatically monitoring. And then whenever we do see maybe a certain jump of uh, lack of availability or some sort of issue occur, we can go ahead and denote to you, hey, there's maybe an issue we might need to look further into by generating those, those alert, alert notifications. Now also with the, the monitoring, there's also the ability for us to not only just report the availability of the system, but also re report a little bit of the security as well. So that way we can help to make sure that, you know, are we compliant with our tool with Office 365? Because especially when we talk about things like, uh, you know, lost passwords, user box, uh, mailbox security changes, uh, suddenly uh, one of the biggest issues I used to have where uh, there was a reply all on the, uh, on one email that went to every user in the in the email system. So we could go ahead and take a look at some of those irregularities to see maybe when it first occurred, and then maybe be able to identify if it's happening again to maybe make some sort of notification out to our system saying, hey, be aware about these issues. So that way, if there is any you know, issues with maybe someone sending too many emails uh, or sending email to everybody in the, in the whole uh, enterprise, uh, also, maybe attachments, attachment size. So things that can also be not only just leveraging the um, data traversal as it's going in and out between the mailboxes, but also you know that storage going to the cloud and going back to all the different users. So that's a different area in here is being able to kind of report that usability and then give you a better view of and visual view of the compliance, uh, the compliance visibility here uh, for reporting the uh, the individual user user accessibility. Now, a lot of this in here I've been talking about with, it really covers uh, really two of our tools. We, we talk here about uh, server and application monitor, and then I'll be talking here a little bit about our, our access rights. But especially when we talk about the server and application monitor, what we try to do is make sure that you have, like I said, with the continuous monitoring, we're, we're consistently pulling this, pulling this, and giving you the metrics at a glance with those service line agreements. You also be able to help make better informed decisions, so that way you can really reduce spending not only on the the uh, the 
you know, understanding what's going on, but also better uh, understand what's what's going on with the system as we start monitoring this this data over time. Now, there's also a lot of metrics of not only just the usability of the, the users, but also licensing. So, if we need to know if we are overutilizing our licenses, over underutilizing, if we have a lot of inactive users that are, you know, still consuming that license. So that's some of the reports and some of the visibility views that we also have in here is the ability for us to show the, those the subscriptions assigned by each user. Like I mentioned, one of, one of the first areas I was really working on or talking about first with our server and application monitor, but now that we talk about, you know, going into different areas, talk about, you know, provisioning and permissions, permission access, but also I always say is historical permission access. Since that's the number one issue you'll never really see in Active Directory is what was the, the user's permission access, not just today, but a week, a month, through two, three months ago. So with the Access Rights Manager, that's one of its powerful, most powerful areas in here is being able to scan our SharePoint, our, our Office 365 different systems, taking a look at each user, taking a look at their permissions, and then keeping all that data stored in our, our database. So that way, if we do need to take a look at maybe currently right now, or if we need to see what that user had permission or per permission access to maybe uh, that, that you know days or weeks ago, we can then go and take a look at that permission access. So like I mentioned, if there's a SharePoint, maybe they've, they've created a ticket because they, they have a, a very specific report they need to submit into uh, SharePoint, and they've been doing this for months, if not years. And then suddenly there's some sort of permission issue. So with Access Rights Manager, you know, instead of just having the, the help desk person just arbitrarily giving access to that area or aspect of SharePoint, maybe we go ahead and run a report to take a look at maybe what might have changed as it relates to the user. Maybe we made the change because we used to have it individually set by users, and then we're going into a more dynamic, you know, group group assignments. So that as those, you know, so if there's some sort of issue here, we can see maybe they're not they're not really supposed to be accessing this this area. Maybe something under something else, uh, and that's a really great thing in here is is being able to visualize the historical, but then also being able to create and provision and deprovision accounts or systems as we need to. And then, like I said, because we're keeping that history, that's a great way of, of us to see, you know, if, if there was any modifications, because we do have a little roll up, a logbook, basically showing you all the tasks and all the changes that have occurred day after day after day. So that way, if we do need to see, like, when that change occurred, maybe who did it, when it occurred, all that will be stored in its logging system, so that way we can have that as an additional uh, report or a visible view. Now, like I mentioned, there's also that, that auditing so that there's a lot of the permission auditing, not only just for SharePoint, but also for OneDrive. Uh, so that if you do need to, to make sure that, you know, do we have appropriate security, you know, uh, least, you know, are, do we have least in, or like I said, do we have groups, what type of groups, who modified the groups, uh, we'll be able to uh, report and reflect that as a compliance policy report in our, our Access Rights Manager. And then, like I said, same thing for SharePoint, so user access, and that way it's a great compliance tool to make sure that, you know, do the p appropriate people have the appropriate read privileges, view privileges, read, write, or full access, uh, especially as they're, they're doing their, their standard tasks uh, day after day. Great, so I'll go ahead and go to the demo here real quick. Okay, great. So under the Office 365 summary here, so really what I'm doing here is I just went under our, our online demo, our ryandemo.solons.com, in case you just want to access this at, uh, later on after, after this uh, webinar here. You can also go under my dashboards, applications. We actually do have a specific Office 365 view, so that way you can kind of get a contextual view of, of not just any application, but also uh, of some of the more key applications like I mentioned here since we are talking about this. So if you did need to go into other areas of more maybe we're we're currently on Exchange and thinking about moving to Office 365. We do have that Exchange view, SQL, you know, or also any of the other application for application monitoring. But like I mentioned, with the Office 365, like I mentioned, that we've created this so that if as we're monitoring, maybe we're monitoring the connection, monitoring the Exchange mailboxes, monitoring maybe the, some of the uh, permissions of the systems and also maybe accessing, you know, looking at teams to see number of calls or number of meetings that are currently going on. Uh, and then also taking a look at this 
continuously. So with these, each one of these applications, they have a service line agreement. So if we did see, you know, a certain number of files have a sudden jump in number or difference in number, it could go ahead and let us know that, hey, you know, it was an abnormal re read cycle over the last five or 10 minutes or maybe 30 minutes or an hour. Maybe we need to take a look into this a little bit further because uh, there's, you know, that sudden storage and utilization. You know, now we're suddenly having to, uh, maybe we also, uh, there's other areas that are modifications that might be happening in the infrastructure. Similar for teams, so if there's things for calls, meetings, and then also looking at the daily number of users, they're actually accessing the system and it's actually able to report to us kind of really the front end or how the end user is actually kind of accessing each, uh, you know, each tool or each, each view in here. Now it's also not just monitoring and reporting to us as a red green view uh, is, is it up or down, but also giving you a uh, different ways of, of visualizing the data. So whether it is a red, green, uh, red, yellow, green, are we having issues? Maybe we need to look at the more statistical nature of the system, or do we need to more visually map it in here? So that's also one of the other areas we, that we have in our Office 365 is the ability for us to go into what we call a performance stack or performance analysis. So let's say that we were focusing on you know the 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 individual details of here we're looking at transactions and response time, but then we need to overlay different areas of, or other systems. You're not limited to just that one system we're looking at. So one of the things that we could do is maybe focus on uh, you know different filters, sub different filters for systems, drag and drop it into the application, and then have it in here for a real quick view for that that uh, historical monitoring. What's nice about this performance stack analysis report is, like you saw on, before I clicked on it, is that whenever you do save these, these then became, become available as a widget resource, which then you can then leverage and utilize on your dashboard page. So let's say that you know here we need not just the last 12 hours, but uh, a lot of customers like to do like last 24 or last seven days. So they could kind of see you know day after day what's the heartbeat of the network, if there's an abnormal jump. They can go ahead and, and jump into that specific area or specific view. Now, this also gives us the ability for us to overlay also our alerts and our events. So, if there are any alerts or events that are also generated, that's one of the capabilities that we have here in the performance analysis. Is that I just added events with that jump in here and that that response time. I'll go ahead and click on that and just focus on this the short time period in here. And now we're looking at the individual events that might have been generated at that time. Same thing for alerts. I go ahead and click on that one to then see what alert might have been generated here. Or here it looks like we had some sort of, of other issue previously. So I could go ahead and jump over to this one to see a little bit more about you know, what type of alerts were generated. And then there are also going to be links back taking us into the alert in detail. So now we're not only just looking at the, just the performance data, but we're overlaying those events and those alerts. So now I can see, okay, there was an alert that was generated. Let's go to that alert in detail. Here we can see that the alert was triggered. In fact, it's still triggered right now, so we know it's, you know, it's still happening. But then what were the events or the tasks that were done when this alert was triggered or continuously re-triggered because the alert has persisted for so long? Now there's also a lot of other details in here too. So if there's other areas of you know, other devices or other aspects, systems that are also having similar problems. We're actually going to show is that having an outage issue and a link to each system. And then also this is a great view here to see how many times this alert for certain objects have, have triggered previously. Uh, it's very common for our customers to sometimes come to us saying, you know, I, I have an alert that, that's, that's flapping or, or it's generating an alert maybe every 30 minutes or something and resetting after five minutes. So maybe some of the things that we can do in here is take a look to see, yes, it's, it was triggered, but it was only triggered for a very short time. So one of the things that you can actually do is go into the alerts and under the, under the trigger conditions, you can actually customize. So not only just change or modify the conditions, but also make sure that the condition must exist for a certain time period. And then when we talk about alert, alert notifications, do we need to go ahead and, you know, send the event message to email a system externally or what uh, a lot of customers have been asking for recently, is looking for the visibility out as it relates to or sending it to a chat system. So here I'm taking this mine to Discord so that whenever an alert is triggered or generated, I'm not only just getting the alert, but also with our variables, 
predefining and pre basically giving me a good pictorial view about the system when it, it when it da went down. So where we're looking at those service line agreements, we can set and, and define those warning critical thresholds. Here in the alert, it's automatically letting me know was this last last poll in in one of those thresholds when it went down? Because that will give me a good contextual view as well as a link to maybe the details page of that device. Or that's actually going this this bomb link's actually going to a performance analysis report. So that's also one of the other areas a lot of customers like to do is pre-generate these performance analysis reports so that when there's the, the, then the alerts triggered, I know I want to see these certain views or report here, um, you know, for quick information. Now, like I mentioned, with the uh, the views in here, so the the performance analysis is one way of, of visualizing the system. There's also the uh, the newer map system that we also include in our, our Orion maps. So what we give you is the ability for you to drag and drop and visualize. So that way, in case we do need to show, you know, here we have Azure, Azure Cloud in the background. One of the things that we can actually show is the connections and conditionally set the connections. So in case we do want to show the dependencies or we don't, you can turn on and turn off these, these functions as we need to. So here I can turn on the application or turn off the application dependencies, the standard dependencies. Maybe we don't want to see the, the members of a group. So you can see very quickly I can turn on and turn off conditionally to show maybe just the network topology, but not the dependencies, or just the dependencies, but not the topology. So it's very very uh, nice for you to go in here and set and modify these as you need to. And you'll notice that each one of these uh, systems control here. So go ahead and you can select and, and customize all these systems. So in case we do want to do maybe some customization with these icons, we can utilize the standard icons that we ship with a product, but it's really easy for you to go and customize, maybe redefine the, the size of them. So if we need to go from 50 to 150, it's really easy. We can change or modify the text. So if we know that maybe we need to make sure that there is the, the caption of the name of the device, or we need to know maybe the CPU. There's, there actually gives you the ability for you to search and then find some systems in here. Here we're looking at a component, so we could maybe also report back, you know, the status or is it disabled, uh, or some other uh, maybe also custom properties. You can also just type in anything on, on the bottom here, and it'll go ahead and start adding those uh, to those fields in case you did want to have um, just just something specific to the systems. Also, not only just visualizing these uh, icons, you'll notice that they're showing us red, yellow, green, but then there's also the ability for us to show a little bit more in detail about like the icon, uh, maybe we want to change it based upon the status. So I only want you to show me, you know, show me the standard icon unless maybe it's in a warning or critical or outage or down. That's one of the things you can do in here is conditionally go and set these rules, and you're not really limited to just the ones that we ship out of the box. You can go click on the browse and bring in your own icons, so that way you can really make this your own uh, and and customize this so so that you know not just you but really everybody in, in the in the room understands a little bit more about what's going on uh, with these systems. There's also different shapes, so I always like to de denote different shapes of my systems. So here maybe I'm doing hexagon for my app my components. Maybe my network devices I'm doing the circles. You can use square or rectangle, so you can actually have different ones. And there's also different colors or backgrounds that we can also uh, utilize for the individual devices or for the map overall, too, uh, here as a system. Uh, also, uh, background. So in case we do have a certain background that we know we like to utilize, you can actually have those saved in here. Uh, or just browse and add it into the system uh, on demand to utilize that, that background background view. Here, let me bring up the applications here. Let's see here. Okay. So the first one I brought up in here is, is the Microsoft Teams. Like I mentioned, these are just some of the default templates that we have. And this, uh, this kind of always says, I always say this, one of the things that we try to do is we try to be flexible in our accessibility. So some of the things that we do are best practices, but you can see here that these are PowerShell scripts. So if there are any additional ones, additional scripts that you want to run, you do have the ability to customize and pull back additional metrics if you need to. 
So like I said, there are some ones that we do ship with the product, so, but you can customize. So maybe we don't want to look at number of calls, but number, maybe number of concurrent calls you can do so. Uh, you know, chat messages, we can take a look at and report all these this, these metrics. And that's the idea in here so that whenever we do see a problem or an issue, we can also always report back a little bit more detail, not only just the statistic, but also report a message as well. Uh, that's actually one of the flexible features with all of our scripts is that you're able to report maybe uh, a number or uh, some sort of information so we know is it up, down, or warning, and also a message to, or contextual information to help understand how we get to that, that uh, in case you need to really fill in all levels of IT to understand why are we seeing a certain you know, metric or issue here as it relates to maybe, maybe the number of current calls that are currently happening in the system. In fact, that's why I actually, when I clicked on the ones in here, that's one of the things that we actually include in our set settings view is the, the description of each one of these component checks that we include with our default templates. So if you're not sure about what some of our default templates are, I always say you can very freely edit the application template or go into the component view in detail and we'll always show you what the uh, what all of our, our default templates are going to include uh, with the system as we're taking a look at all these metrics. So here we're looking at number of calls or systems or for teams. I'm just going to jump over to our next one in here. This one is for the, the one uh, OneDrive. So looking at our share drive here, we can take a look at total files, active. Like I mentioned, by taking a look at the, the, the system and the metrics, we're doing this continuously. So if we need to look at if there's a certain jump or delta between the previous poll, we can then go ahead and generate to say, hey, this is an issue or a possible issue, especially if it's persisted for a while, to then generate that, that notification or that, that um, whenever there's a problem. One of the other areas that we also try to include in here too is a application stack view. So if there are other applications, maybe we're monitoring uh, other systems, other groups, and we want to combine those systems, that's actually one of the things that we include here with this application stack view is the capability so that way you can really jump between these different levels and still be able to click back to the system for a little bit more, uh, more detail. So here I clicked on the group for Office 365. So the group is actually looking at all the various uh, applications and then letting us know that, hey, this one lab or this one system is in warning. So we can go to that one area or that one application, or that system to look a little bit more in detail to see what's going on, what's the current issue or outage. One of the other applications here we also have is the, the uh, mobile devices. So like I said, more PowerShell scripts, so we can check for uh, devices that are active, inactive. So you can take a look at some of their states, report that back as an issue. And then there's also the mailbox detail view. So we could look at inactive, active users, how, much pe how many people are over their quota, and also looking at their mailbox size. And also maybe the, if we start seeing a lot of forwarded messages, we, maybe that's a possible exfiltration event. So we can actually see, you know, monitor that component and then if it suddenly jumps up very quickly you know take a look to see what mailboxes or what users were having uh, some of those uh, doing some of those actions here this one's also this one's a little bit more of azure but i always like to mention usually when customers have office 365 they they also are already looking at or already utilizing azure or aws or some sort of other cloud uh, public cloud function and so that's really what you have in here with a server and application monitor is that capability of monitoring those, those other applications or those other servers and systems and being able to also bring that back here into the similar um, application product or view. Now the other product I also mentioned was our Access Rights Manager. And our product, the, the Access Rights Manager is a little bit different. Well, one of the first things I wanted to bring up in here was, like I mentioned, there's multiple different connectors. So whether we connect to your on-premise on file, file server, maybe you have a OneDrive or, or Azure Drive, uh, Azure uh, as your backend storage for your uh, as a file server. There's also supportability for SharePoint on-premise, the uh, or the Office 365 to be able to go and discover and, and monitor uh, all the per, um, permissions accessibility and to see a little bit more about, like I mentioned, a little bit more about the users and be able to really just not only take a look at the latest scan or the late, you know, what's currently going on, 
but also jump back historically. So it's very common where I like to go back. Usually, I always like to go back at least one or two weeks because, like I mentioned, one of our, my biggest issues, especially when I was doing sysadmin and help desk uh, work, was a lot of it was customer said it was working previously, but it's not working now. So here, what I could do is take a look or, or search based upon a server or based, search based upon maybe an Active Directory group or user, and then be able to search that user or that, that SharePoint or the OneDrive and be able to kind of relationally see how all these systems uh, interconnect. Now, like I mentioned, there is a logbook that we do keep in here. So as we are doing all these various checks and scans, maybe I wanted to see a report about what happened on the 20th. So I can see all the different various events that might have happened on certain days and then have this as a, available as an ex external report uh, to be able to report to us, you know, what users were going uh, or happening or, or what were they doing against the system. Now the Access Rights Manager also has a lot of different reportable views, not only just for the different uh, cloud systems, but like I said, for, for Active Directory too, uh, for RAD users. So if we did need to look at the accounts in detail, maybe inactive accounts, organizational unit members and their group memberships, and also looking at the, the different file servers and different reports. So there's a lot of different, uh, unresolved SIDs is a great one because if, if we're if unresolved SID, maybe the account's been removed, distribution group was maybe recreated, and we don't have that old old information anymore. So let's go ahead and click on maybe, you know, the unresolved, uh, the, the system IDs or uh, member IDs of that, that object in Active Directory. So like I mentioned, there's just a lot of different reports that we can all do in here. Uh, a great one I always say I like to run is authenticated users or everyone. You know, I shouldn't have, uh, I always say at the very least, I should never see everyone in any of my file servers. Uh, you know, maybe a newer person has set up authenticated users for, as a troubleshooting aspect, but it's not properly resolved that permission uh, or change that out. So when we scan all the different file servers, SharePoint systems, we can go ahead and create this report and then find all the different authenticated permissions against the file so systems or applications to be able to report back uh, what was going on uh, with those, those various systems or aspects. And I'll show similar what we have in our system. One of the things we actually show is permission, permission access. So here, if I look at, I'm just doing a file server, but this would be same with your, your cloud systems. Whenever you go into all the various drives, we'll show you permission, permission access and then be able to go back in here to see what's going on. Now you'll notice at the top here, it's saying you're viewing historical data. So there is a comparison, because you can do scan comparisons. So in case we did need to look at the differences, you can do so with your file system, SharePoint, or all your different uh, various users or directories. So that's a great way of, like I mentioned, not only just getting that historical point in time, but also comparing against now versus what we saw in the past be able to see maybe what has changed or what's been modified. Great, so I, I always like to take a little bit just, like I mentioned, I always like to go just really, really quick into the demo just to show you a little bit about what we can kind of do in the system. But I do like to, to mention that we do have a lot of use case pages, solutions, a little bit more about different areas of uh, how you can access, get a bit more information. Like I mentioned, I try to make this as, as general as possible because we're, we're not quite, uh, a lot of different people are, are in different areas or aspects of Office 365. So if you are, whether you are just, you know, maybe you're you're looking into it as a first time aspect, you're, uh, we're told to at least kick the tires or at least evaluate it, you're implementing, or if you've already migrated or you're in full, in full implementation, we have different reports, different use case scenarios and solutions that are available for you. Uh, like, like I mentioned, not only just Office 365, 365, like the mailboxes, but also the SharePoint uh, or OneDrive. And then if you are still on premise with the, your exchange, we still we still have a lot of those areas for you to cover. So if you do need to look at mailboxes, what servers those users assigned to, we do have a lot of use case pages in the system. And then with that access rights manager, the audit management use case is also a great uh, uh, option for you to look take a look at too. So here, I just want to go ahead and break it out to a quick uh, question and answer real quick. So it looks like I have a couple of questions in here. So let me take a look at my first question. So 
So the first question is, you know, I know that Office 365 is in a, in a subscription sub, subscription base. What is, uh, has SolarWinds also been, been looking at a, a subscription as well? And that, that's a great question. Uh, in, in fact, uh, historically, we've always sold our pro products as perpetual, which means if you purchase the product, you will always own or have access to the system. But if you do need to use it for short, short contracts or uh, just on demand, we do have a subscription base that's available for uh, all the applications. The only one that we don't have right now is that Access Rights Manager. That one still is on the uh, the perpetual license perpetual license model. And then another question a customer was asking about was audit logs or audit sources from the various uh, cloud uh, or Office 365 type type system. So that's actually a great. Uh, question. In fact, that's one of the areas where SolarWinds is currently expanding and working on right now. One of the things I always like to say is, you know, if you uh, if you go to our forum site, thwack.solarwinds.com, you'll notice that in there we always do have uh, we always do have the ability for us to uh, for you to submit feature requests. But I always say that's a great area for you to talk to our UX team or our user experience team because. Whenever we add or build certain new functions, we always like to take current customers that own the product to understand, you know, if we were to add this feature, how can can we make sure that you are successful with this in the tool? So I always say definitely take advantage of the, the system uh, in case uh, or the, the UX on our forum site, like I mentioned. So that way you can definitely not just make the, the tool better for you, but really better for, for, for everybody. Oh, thank you, Mark. So actually, my uh, my marketing person just told me we actually did make the arm a, a subscription, so it is uh, available uh, for uh, yeah as a subscription base. Great. So like I mentioned, I just want to uh, you know want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, uh, I will, uh, like I mentioned, I'm the technical account manager, so uh, contacts in the uh, in our presentation. Uh, also, if you uh, would like to do a more extended demo, just let us know, and we can always go more depth or detail. Uh, I always like to do this, especially with each customer, because each customer does have a different role or function or area of responsibility. So always just make sure to let us know so that we know where to definitely go and expand on here. Uh, in the near future. But what, like like I mentioned, well, one last then like I mentioned with the contact. So here's our contact details. If you do need to, whether it's call, email, like I mentioned, we can definitely schedule an online demo. There's also a full evaluations of everything you saw today. So in case you do need to, uh, if you would like to not only just look at this but test it in house, we have a lot of customers where a lot of their their tests become productions. So that's one of the nice features of our products is that if you do need to evaluate and you do want to turn it into production, it's just a quick key application to be able to apply that uh, in, into our systems. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.